hey, on this video, we're going to give you an overview of this. This is the Balina Fin, a Raspberry Pi on steroids. And we are going to show you how to deploy containers over the air with Balena Cloud. So for that, I would like to introduce you, David. Hey, David, how are you? Hey, I'm doing well. Thanks for the intro, Mark. Yep. As you just mentioned, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the Balena Fin Raspberry Pi uh, Compute Module Carrier Board. So let me switch cameras real quickly and get them into the frame. Oops. What is this? Get that out. That was. Okay, so this is a Bolina Fin. This is a Raspberry Pi carrier board designed for IoT deployments. So most people are actually familiar more with this, oops, got it upside down, type of a Raspberry Pi, which is a standard uh, form factor that they've produced for a number of years now. They come in various configurations, a Pi 2, a Pi 3, a Pi 4, but essentially they're all the same looking. However, the Raspberry Pi Foundation also produces this little piece of equipment, which is a called an SOM, a System On Module, and this is a Raspberry Pi Compute Module. It contains the processor, the memory, and you can get them with or without storage attached onto them as well. So, it contains just the core compute capabilities and everything else is broken out onto your carrier board. So other carrier boards exist as well, but this one in particular, the Bolina Fin, like I said, is geared towards IoT use cases. So let me start covering what's on here. I'm gonna start off with the common items that a normal Raspberry Pi would contain anyway, which is USB ports, an ethernet port, an HDMI port, oop, I'm a little off the camera, an HDMI port, and your GPIO pins along the uh, bottom edge of it. But what makes this unique is a couple of other items, such as the addition of a second camera interface um, slot over here. A normal Raspberry Pi has one camera input, but a Fin actually has two camera inputs, which is good for um, computer vision applications. We also have something that's actually really important here, which is this additional coprocessor. So this is an ARM Cortex M4 MCU. The reason that that's actually important is that you can use that MCU to turn off the main processor, which is a Cortex-A, in a Raspberry Pi, it's a Cortex-A quad-core A53. But the point is this, using the coprocessor, you can put the board essentially to sleep to conserve electricity if you're in um, you know, a constrained environment or running on battery power or you know, some IoT deployments are um, in rugged terrain and conditions. So using MCU to put to sleep or wake up the board based on time or events. Um, Moving along, I guess I'll go right around the board. You also have your power over ethernet pins over here, so you can power it via uh, PoE. Spin it around, and we've got all of our LEDs. Uh, I think there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. So you can Excellent. certainly um, uh, you know, get your status readouts via those. You also have a SIM card slot, a, na a nano SIM card. So, you know, um, you need to make sure that you get the right type of SIM card, but that'll allow you to connect to 4G LTE. Um, you know, again, in IoT deployments, many times they're out in the wild. There's not exactly Ethernet out there or Wi Fi out there. So, um, a lot of times folks are running on cellular connections. Um, continuing to come around this way, there's another set of pins. And these GPI over here, or these pins over here actually interface over to that coprocessor that we talked about earlier. So you can add additional hardware or capability on top of the board to then interface with the MCU. Um, you know, it's a, like I said, it's a Cortex M4, so it's not the most powerful processor, but that's the whole point. You have your powerful processor back here, 
and you're using the MCU just to control basic core functionality of the rest of the hardware. That's really cool f feature, actually. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to try to get this into frame, but um, as opposed to a normal Raspberry Pi, which uses a micro USB or a USB type C, depending on if you're using a um, Pi 3 or Pi 4 for power. Here, we've actually replaced that with a standard 5.5 slash 2.1 millimeter barrel jack for the power supply. Um, so these are uh, fairly standard in lots of other embedded devices. Um, a regular Raspberry Pi, you know, when they were originally envisioned, they came out. This is a Pi 4, so it has the USB type C, but um, especially the older ones, the Pi 2, Pi 3, they have that micro USB, which, you know, it's good for charging a cell phone, but it's really not the best for trying to power an IoT device. Um, next to it is another power input, which is a Phoenix um, adapter port. Those are used more in industrial settings, so that's yet another way to power the board. Um, again, targeted at that industrial or IoT use case. Now, while I'm on the topic of power, one of the other things that's unique about the fin is that it accepts a much wider range of voltage uh, input. It will take a 5 volt through 24 volt input adapter, whereas again, coming back around to the regular Pi, it's just simply a 5 volt unit. So you can, um, you can add, you know, up to... I guess that would be a 24 volt. If you did a one amp, that'd be what, 24 watts of power. So, you know, if you're driving larger devices off of the GPIO or have additional things uh, attached, um, you can make sure they're, they're powered up. Um, yeah, that's, that's gonna, really important. This is one of the, yeah. Yeah. Raspberry Pi hat, no, this voltage. Nice. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm gonna flip it over real quick and on the back side also, there's one more slot here, which is MPCIe, micro PCIe. And that slot is a standard configuration for typically 4G LTE cellular modems, or I know you can get LoRa gateway adapters, I think in that form factor as well. Um, I have heard that there are other, um, other kinds of devices and things that people use in automation type of settings and factory settings. Um, I haven't tested any of those, but yeah, that MPCIe is a standard form factor, so that should um, that should be good there. And then the last thing I want to touch on is there is actually a micro USB port here on the corner of it, and that is used to program the board. And the reason I say that is because Regular Raspberry Pis use SD cards. So those of you who have used Pis know that SD cards pop in, you flash the SD card with a program like Etcher and away you go. Those of you who are more power users though, know that SD cards are prone to failure. They were not really invented with the run a computer off of them use case in mind. So they were never really designed for um, Linux to be installed and run on them, reading and writing all day long. They wear out, they fail. Um, the Fin, however, has eight gigs of EMMC. Oh, actually it comes in eight, 16, and 32 gig variants now that I think about that. But um, has EMMC on the board, which is a more robust, and more permanent type of storage directly embedded into the PCB. And that will, um, that's kind of the same storage that would be on like uh, your cell phone or essentially similar to, you know, an, an SSD in a laptop or desktop PC. So anyways, permanent storage without the use of SD cards. Again, all about reliability out in an IoT use case. You really don't want your device um, failing because of a bad SD card in the middle of nowhere. So, yeah, this is why I call it uh, Raspberry Pi on steroids. No? Uh, <laughs> yeah, super industrial, exactly. ready to go on production. Yeah. So, I'll switch my camera back onto myself. The thing that I love before you switch your camera. Oh, go ahead. 
It's the color GPIO, actually. I love oh, that. yeah, the color GPIO is a, is a nice feature. Um, <laughs> yeah, those, I've well, seen them, I've seen ahead, them on a few boards, but yeah, it's a, it's a great feature to, uh, to quickly identify what goes where. Um, well, actually, our, this is available on the, um, on the FIN 1.1, because actually for the FIN 1.0, I think that they are color black. Yeah, you are correct. There's an earlier batch of Bolina fins that the version 1.0 did not make use of the colored GPIO. You're right. That was a, a later edition. Yeah, so this is a version 1.1 here that you're looking at. Yep. All right. So, all right. So, with that cool. said, how about I pass it back over to you and you show us how to actually get some software on this thing, huh? Let's make it happen. Yeah, I think that what we're going to do today is to um, deploy a Node.js Hello World uh, software, something pretty simple on the Bolina Fin, just to show, hey, showcase how to deploy a uh, Docker container into a Fin, but actually it's as well similar that you can do with Raspberry Pi and Jetson Nanos, etc. cetera, um, with, with the Bolina IO system, with the Bolina Cloud. Okay, so uh, let me share you my screen. So I start with this. All right, can you see my screen? Yep, sure can. Okay, so this is the Valena Cloud. If you don't have an account, just go to the valena.io and create an account, sign up there. It's free up to 10 devices, so that's, um, that's super straightforward. This demo can be done super simple and free. Um, so first thing that you need to do actually is to create an application. Okay, you come here, you introduce the name of your application and you select the device type that you have. In my, in this case, I selected the Belina Fin. I already did it, okay, I created this Belina Fin Hello World here. And next step that you need to do here is to add a device. When you add a device, that means that you are ready to download um, a Balena OS uh, image that will come, no, that you will download on your computer and you will be ready to flash on your device. In this case, so you can actually say if it's Ethernet only or you want to connect it with Wi Fi. I already did it, I don't want to waste time. Yeah. Actually, um, <laughs> Actually, on the instructions, uh, the, yeah, everything is very well documented. And there is this getting started guide that it's um, very nice because actually you can, yeah, in this case, we're on Balina Fin, but you also can decide, okay, I want to do it with Python or with Haskell. There is always someone who programs Haskell in the room. So, um, yeah, you can decide uh, the programming language and your uh, device uh, or your board and go the step by step. It's very well documented. But yeah, let's let's go step by step. Here, I already um, downloaded uh, Pelina OS image on my computer uh, with Wi-Fi. Uh, so now it's time. If you have the Pelina Fin 1.1, it's time to plug it. Can you see my camera as well? Maybe? Yeah. Okay. So it's time to plug it through the micro USB. If you have a Pelina Fin 1.0, you should plug the uh, Jack Barrel plus the micro USB. Okay, in this, um, I, you will need to remember me, David, later when it will be programmed. I will need to connect the, the jack barrel and disconnect the micro USB because it only works for programming the board. So, okay, so we have the Balina OS downloaded. I already explained that with my Wi Fi credentials. Now it's time to flash download uh, OS. So, for that, uh, I strongly recommend to use Balina Etcher. If you don't know what is Valina Etcher, uh, go to etcher.io, go to valina.io slash etcher. And it's a tool that very easily enables you to flash uh, an SD card um, in, yeah, in a really nice experience. So I have here the Valina OS image for Valina Fin. I select, yeah, I have actually an SD card, but as David was explaining before, so the compute module exposes the EMCC memory that it's on the on the um, on the Valina fin actually the, I have eight gigabytes so I select the the Valina the, the Valina fin uh, memory not the SD card that I have and I start flashing it so I put my password 
Oh yeah. Um, okay, so it's it's flashing at this moment. Okay, so um, what's happening? It's that the Balina OS, the operating system image, it's getting into into the Balina fin. Okay, and meanwhile we are going to do uh, another interesting thing. That is to show you how we are going to put this Node.js hello world piece of code. Uh, into, yeah, how are we going to deploy this piece of code on Node.js into the Valena fin? For that, it's, yeah, you need another support, which is the Valena CLI or Valena CLI. What do you prefer, David? Valena CLI or? <laughs> I call it CLI, command line interface, but I have heard people call it the CLI. Okay. <laughs> I, say C I say CLI. That's just my preference. Okay, let's say it. Let's call it CLI. Yeah, whatever. It's good. <laughs> So for that, I, yeah, I'm on Mac, so I have a terminal. Um, so I'm using iTerm for that. I downloaded uh, this Balina node, hello world, that it's on a GitHub repository. So you can find the, the link on this getting started. Um, but actually you can see, so it's a really simple code. It's a server on JavaScript that it's listening on the port 80. And when yeah, you call the port 80, it, it returns a website. Uh, there is this uh, Docker template that maybe it's, uh, yeah, this is a recipe actually that will use the um, Docker to create the image of the container and we'll generate the container later. We will get into that. So it's time to, yeah, push this code into the Valina fin. Well, actually not to the, to the Valina fin. What we are going to do with the Valina CLI is to push this code into the Valina cloud and well, actually to the application that we created on the Valena Cloud, and all the devices that will belong to that application will, will get that code as a, as a container, as a Docker container, and the Valena engine and the supervisor running on the Valena OS that we are actually flashing right now with the Valena HR, will get that container and will make it run. Okay, so let's, let's start with that. First thing that I need to do is to, to, do, uh, to make a login. Okay, okay so, now it's it's done, um, and what we are gonna do now it's to do the Balena push. Well, let me check Balena apps. So we do have this Balena fin hello world, okay? And now it's time to do Balena push, and we will push the code that we have now that I show you the Docker the Docker file, etc. We're gonna push it to this application. So all as I said before, all the devices that belong to this application, actually that has the operating system. That we download, um, we'll have this. Uh, we'll have this code. So, Valina Fin. Hello, I, I brought a, like a long name. Okay, so maybe first time. Yeah, okay, it works. It's uploading the source to the Valina Cloud, and um, yeah, automatically what uh, it will happen. It's that uh, it will uh, yeah create all these Docker recipe and Docker containers to push it into the. Let's go to the, to push it to the devices. So, okay, so this is uh, complete. What I'm gonna do, as I told you, it's uh, we need to connect the check barrel. Let me check, it's here. And I'm gonna unplug this. So now what um, my Valina fan is doing actually, it's probably right now, it's handshaking my Wi-Fi credentials with the router. Probably takes some time, it takes a couple of minutes. But we are gonna see it. It will appear at some point when, yeah, it will be connected to the Wi-Fi. It will appear on my Plena Cloud dashboard as a device. Okay, and at that moment, um, what it will do? It's it will start um, the the Plena engine will get the the Docker container and it will push the code of the Docker container into into this Plena fit. So let's have fingers crossed that I put my <laughs> Wi-Fi credentials and everything. Yeah. I hope you typed them correctly. Otherwise, you're going to be getting an Ethernet cable out. <laughs> yeah, that's a but, big plan. It, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so just make sure I understand correctly. So mm -hmm. over on the Bellina Fin, you downloaded the OS from the Bellina Cloud. You had the download there locally on your Mac, and then you used Etcher to essentially flash the onboard storage, which I had kind of described in that hardware overview. Okay, so the Bolina Fin at that point 
is running just the bare OS. All right. Concurrently, over in your CLI, you pushed a Docker build up to our cloud builder, mm -hmm. uh, or you, you actually pushed a Docker recipe up to our cloud builder. The cloud builder looked at it, examined it, said, okay, looks good, and started churning away. Mm. I just noticed you had a unicorn there, so I'm guessing that the unicorn indicated that the build was successful. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now the, yeah, there it is, yeah. Harley the unicorn. So now the fin, which should be booting up right about now. Yeah, now we see more LEDs turning on. Got some more LEDs going on. That's uh, always a good yeah. thing. And so it's have coming a online. Okay, so yeah, it takes a few minutes. No big deal, you know. Um, but I turn it off and turn it on. Ah, ah, give it the old reboot. All right. You never know. Uh, <laughs> um, so, okay, it's coming online now. It's going to check into Bellina Cloud, and it's going to realize, hey, there is a container waiting for me. Yeah. And it'll start the process of downloading that container, that workload. Um, so, okay. So I'm, I'm following, I'm, I'm with you. Exactly. So, so now this Bellina Finn has a, has a Bellina OS, not that we download it from the Bellina cloud. Mm -hmm. So there is a supervisor on a container that will ask to the Bellina cloud, hey, there is a new container or something for me. And now you're going to see on the Valina Cloud dashboard that, uh, yeah, it, it will appear like a supervisor started on the logs. And then it will start downloading the, the repository that we push to this application. Okay. okay. So I'm sure that that'll take a few minutes also. No, sure. no big deal there. But in the meantime, while we're waiting for that, I mean, I have a fin on my desk. I literally just showed it to you guys but I'm halfway around the world from you. You're coming from Barcelona, and I'm coming from Phoenix, Arizona in the US. So we are literally nearly half a world apart. How can I get my fin to download that container? That's a very good question. So actually, maybe I can grant you access to, the, to this application. So you can download the Valina OS with your Wi-Fi credentials, and yeah, and automatic automatically, no, get uh, your your Valina Auto magic. Work. Yeah, Auto magic. <laughs> yeah, there is I a like kind that. of magic always, no? Yeah, it? sure is. So let's do it. So all right. yeah, when you are on the application, um, yeah, with all the devices there, uh, there is this section of members. So you can invite, you can add new members. So I will invite. All right. Members. So they I have a. Yeah, so I have a Bellina Cloud account um, that I've got some That's correct, applications. Uh, just go to, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm inviting you to. Yeah, so I have a handful of applications in mine. And when you did that, I actually just saw a new one appear. Bellina Finn, hello world. And I am looking at exactly on my screen. I know you already have the screen share on, but I'm on the exact same page as you. I literally see Long Pond online for three minutes. So I'm going to click Add Device the same way that you did previously. You want to share your screen? Nah, we oh, already okay. went through it. It's fine. It's no big deal. It's the, the exact device. same. Yep. Okay. Add new device. I'm on the same page as you. I'm going to choose Belina Finn. I'm gonna to go to Ethernet plus Wi-Fi, and I'm gonna type in my Wi-Fi credentials, which I hope I get correct. Otherwise, I'm gonna be the one pulling out the Ethernet cable. <laughs> that's Let's always see. here. Yep. So that's very handy because, um, yeah, you can have like, yeah, it's <clears throat> it's usual, no, that if you connect Wi-Fi. Most of the times, the Wi-Fi credentials are different. So if I would have shared my operating system image to you, that would not have worked because yeah, you have a different Wi-Fi than yep. you know, at your office or at home than mine. Mm -hmm. 
So that's really interesting now that I grant you access to, to this application. So you can actually download the same Balina OS image that I have with the same uh, deploy that I made a few seconds ago, a few minutes ago uh, with the Balina CLI, but with your Wi Fi credentials on it. Yep. So my download is completing. I'm going to take a moment here to do the exact same steps that you already demonstrated, which is open up Etcher and flash mine the same way that you did. So I'm going to need a few minutes, but meanwhile, we can probably check in on the progress yeah. of yours. How's it coming along? Let's see. Uh, no logs yet. Nothing yet. You sure you got your Wi-Fi credentials correct? Well, yeah. But yeah. It, oh, well, yeah, because it's it online. online. Yeah. Uh-oh. Maybe we can reboot it. Uh-oh, I'm going to have to give it the old-fashioned reboot, maybe. <laughs> Should I click here, or? Uh, yeah, do that. If I click uh, LEDs, yeah, it is, this is interesting because, yeah, the LED is working properly. Can you see it? Yes, I can. So yep. it's connected. Uh, we need to, yeah, I, I'm going to so do So why one. is it not? So I'm the gonna... supervisor has not checked in. Let's reboot it. So to reboot, yeah, there is this security uh, thing to write a device name. So I'm gonna reboot the device. And meanwhile, meanwhile, I have just yeah, started can... flashing. Where are you right now? Is your own nature? Yep. I'm in Etcher, 30% complete on the flash. It's amazing, Etcher, how it works. It's super simple. And yeah, a lot of people is using it for yeah, Ubuntu's. I'm actually seeing a lot of people uh, using it to download uh, yeah, all types of operating system. And yeah, and yeah, for the Raspberry Pi, so for the regular mm -hmm. one. It's incredible how good is this software. All right, flash is almost done. It's going pretty quick, actually. It's in the validation step. Operation timeout. Okay, now it's updating. And now it's updating. Ooh. So, so now actually the the Belina engine. Um, so the, yeah, all the all the code that we pushed, no, it's it's being downloaded into the into the Balenafin here. And then what will happen is that the supervisor that it's here, when all the image will be downloaded and a container will be created, uh, then the supervisor will launch or will uh, yeah, start the, the new Docker container. Uh, it's interesting to understand as well that first time that you do this operation, it takes, yeah, it take, it's a slower than next times because yeah, next time when, when you're gonna change uh, part of the code of your yeah of your repo or whatever, it will um, it will just upload or push the, the changes that you do with weekly deltas. So then there's oh okay, interesting. So there's a couple of so that actually makes me think about a few things. Then, all right. So sure, the first one, it's downloading the entire container. Now, in this particular case, it's not a huge container, but uh, I can see how some of them, you know, machine learning or AI um, type use cases would be a would be a large would be a large container. All yeah. right. So, if you then make some changes locally in your development environment, and you go to push those changes, you're only going to download onto the target device the difference, the delta between exactly. the original build and the later. So yeah, um, you know, some of those AI inferencing um, workloads are multiple gigs per container. So that's actually really handy to only download what has changed the delta. Um, Absolutely, that's a really useful feature. Yeah, you don't want to pull a- You don't need to pull, download all the time. Yeah, several multiple gigs. 
yeah. especially if you're out in the wild and your bandwidth is limited or your connectivity is limited. Well, wow, it's actually a really good feature now that I exactly I think imagine that you more. go with cellular connectivity that costs a lot of money. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it might be paying not very efficient. So that's a really uh, useful per meg or you know per gig or whatever. All right. So yeah. my um, let me see here if I can get this onto my camera. Um, can you see mine now Another? powering up? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I just I plugged it. it in. I see some LEDs. I think that, that it's well in a CLI. It's super interesting. So I think we should do another video just focusing on the CLI. The CLI itself. Well, we can and do a video. All the, on yeah, all this Docker workflow, no, this container workflow mm -hmm. thing. That I think it's really interesting to explain in more the detail. Okay, yep. one thing Absolutely. as well that I did before it's I click on public device URL. So just clicking here, I can not, now that yeah we see that this node server is just, it's listening the port eighty. Just listening here, we can open like the public URL that it's that Balin exposes for devices. Okay, so wow, it works. So uh, as we said, it's a super simple hello world code on Node.js, but it explains now all this workflow of of pushing over the air uh, con a docker container into a device in a really simple way yeah because okay so now that balina fin has the container it's already running i mean yeah you it's sitting on your desk but if it goes if you go place that thing out in the wild somewhere it could be across town could be across the country and you do another push it's going to still update itself no matter where it is um so yeah. Yeah, that's really powerful. Uh, I mean, so long as it has connectivity of some sort, you know, if it's sitting in the wild and it does not have a cellular connection, it's obviously not going to be able to check in and grab that new code. But um, so long as there's some sort of connectivity, that's that's cool. And exactly. I see that you have found my yeah, fin, which is now powering up, like I said, as we speak. So mine is coming online. Um, Still got LEDs on it. It's updating, so. You're as faster than mine, huh? Uh, I'm having a good day. Normally, mine is the slowest. I do <laughs> a live stream IoT happy hour weekly on Fridays at 1600 UTC. And you can find that on our, um, on our uh, Bolina YouTube channel. But we do a lot of live builds, and mine is always the slowest. I'm always the last <laughs> one. So this is, <laughs> this yeah, is incredible. I'm not used to this. <laughs> In fact, I need to make a note of this to uh, tell the guys about, because uh, I'll probably never All see right. this happen again. But so yeah, so mine is. You know, on, the, on the logs, how yeah, the supervisor is downloading the image. It's installing the service and start the, and start the service. And then we have the, yeah, so we can probably, uh -oh. uh, should I go. click here or you want to do it? Nah, go ahead, do it. So we can, yeah. Oops, my internet connection, it's not stable. Uh, but yeah, now if we click, I can access to your, to your Valina Finn as well. There it is, from my desk, which you just saw. <laughs> <laughs> So that's cool. In fact, to, to really to really prove it, why don't you click on location on the left hand menu bar? Sure. There's your cursor right there. Yeah. Okay. There it is. And that's me. If you zoom out a little well, maybe bit, maybe we can yeah. click here. No, it's yeah. Yeah, there. That's even better. There they are. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Let me get mine. <laughs> here it is. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that Valina Cloud is the easiest way to manage yeah, a, a large fleet of connected devices and push code yeah. in a really easy way. Yeah. So what did, right. it, that, that, what did we see tonight? So we saw yeah, an overview of the Valina Fin that, as I said before, I, I, for me it's a kind of a Raspberry Pi for industrial environments or yeah, I call it Raspberry Pi on, on steroids. <laughs> um, we saw this overview and we saw a hands-on demonstration of how to deploy or push Docker containers over the air 
uh, with Valena Cloud on all the Valena.io um, software. What else, David? Oh, I think you, I think you covered it. Um, covered all the hardware, covered the workflow. I think we're good. All right. So yeah, expect more videos and see you next all time. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Have a great rest of your days. <laughs> Bye. All right. That's not actually. Bye. Bye.